Hey everyone, so in this video I'll be showing you an app that I learned from YouTube on Canva that is great for building characters if you're doing a children's book or just really any type of book that you just need some characters and you want to create your own. So I already have the app on the side here, it's called Character Build, but if you do not have it yet, just simply go down here and click on apps and then you can search in Canva apps and just type in like character or build and it should come up. It's called Character Builder, actually. So it's right here, the one with the little smiley face. Um, there's also this one that I haven't actually used in a book yet, but I did check it out briefly called Pixton, and it just gives you a bunch of different characters, and you can search for different outfits or emotions. So if you're trying to get some other people like in the background of your book, or I'm not sure if they have the same character and all different emotions, but you may be able to find a main character like that. That one's helpful, but it's not build your own, but there is a bunch of different characters that you can use. So I'm going to go to Character Builder and just give you a quick tutorial on how to actually use this. So it's definitely not super high graphic and detail, like you're not going to get like creases in the face and insane detail, but it definitely works for a children's book or a simple character look. So first I usually start with what style, hair, and if I want a girl or a boy, etc. So I'll go up here and I'll just select one and then it populates the entire person, which is really good um, because I find it a little weird when you can design characters like one part of their body at a time and it just, it weirds me out. So I'm glad that whenever I click on this, it populates their entire body. So that's good. And you can just go through and select what hairstyle you want and kind of go from there. I did notice that it's pretty much going to be all kids. Like this, this person here could definitely be an adult maybe, but in my opinion, all these hairstyles and looks kind of lean towards children. So that's my own opinion on that. And then you go to face. The only thing I don't like is that you can't take away these spots here, like the red circles. And I don't think they look the best. Like, I think that this would look better without them. Um, what you could do if you spent a lot of time on it is you could add a circle from elements and change it to the color of their skin and put it over the circle. But it looks like it's not a perfect circle either. Like, it goes right underneath the eye here. So, I'm not really sure if that would work really well. You'd probably have to do some adjusting. I'll try it later on in this video and we'll see if we can get it to work because I think that that might be beneficial but let's just finish with this tutorial first and then you go to body and you can change the outfit and what they're doing. So this cane I guess is supposed to be like an older person so yeah that kind of makes sense with the outfit. This is a person in a wheelchair sitting down, standing up, got jumping, running, sitting down. So a bunch of different options here. Unfortunately, you can't change the colors. So if you want this to be like a purple dress, like I have not found any way to change it. So that kind of stinks, but let's just do a basic standing pose. And then down here, you can change the skin tone to whatever you would like. And then you can change the hair color as well to whatever you would like. So after that, you would hit done, and the only thing is I haven't noticed a way to edit the character once I hit done. So let's see here. Like if I click on the character, I can do edit image, but apparently there's something wrong with that. We'll see if it does it again when I click that, but I haven't found a way to go through and edit the character. So if I decide I wanted to change their expression, I have to go through and recreate them entirely. I'm going to hit edit image again, and yeah, there's nothing here that really helps. Like, this is just changing kind of the filters, so you'd have to go through and recreate the character again, which kind of stinks, but it's okay. It doesn't take too long, and if you already know what you're, you want your character to look like, it's really not that bad. So, now let's try and see if we can get rid of these circles here. Of course, if you love them, keep them. Um, I probably am going to keep them just because I'm not going to want to go through this effort every single time if I decide to use this character. But let's see just for the tutorial purposes if we can find a way 
to cover up these circles because I'm definitely interested in knowing if that's possible because I did not see any way to do that when creating the character. So I'm just going to move this down. I'm going to move the character over because it keeps... Oh, I can't because I locked them. Let me unlock them. Go, and I'm going to move them over. Lock them again. Here's my circle. I lost it for a minute. Same color as her hair. So now I'm just going to try to position this right in the perfect area here. Let's see. That's still not quite right. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay. And I'm just holding down the control key so I can kind of move it freely. Okay, now we're going to change the color to the color of her skin. So I'm going to go to document colors and then hit pick a color from design and pick this. Okay, and I'm going to exit out so I'm not covering everything yet. So you can see that I kind of missed a little bit here, so I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm nervous I'm going to make it too big. Oh boy. Alright, let's try that. And I'm going to delete this one and then move this one back over. Actually, that really doesn't look too bad. So, it is covering her eyes a bit here, where her eyes weren't covered before on the bottom. So, I'm going to grab another circle, and I'm going to scroll back up, because it brought me all the way down. And I'm going to drag it up here, and I'm going to try to match the circle with her eye, so that way we can get that full circle back again. And we'll see if this works. But this definitely takes, like, a lot of more effort than I probably want to put into every page. Like, I don't mind the circles. I just think that she looks better without them. So, let's do that. There we go. Do that. And it's still not lined up perfectly. And that's going to bother me. There we go. Okay, and perfect. So actually, that worked out really well, and I'm kind of really impressed. So you could definitely, if like you keep your characters the same size on every page, you could just copy and paste the circles over because then they'd match. But if you're changing the size of your character, bigger or smaller, then you're going to have to adjust it every time. But that is one way where that you can get rid of the circles. I'm not sure if it's going to work for every single facial expression, but I personally think that this character looks better without those bright red circles. I wish there's a way to at least like tone them down or something, but I haven't found a way. But regardless, I think this tool is really helpful, especially for children's books, if you're just going to go for a simple design. So I learned this off of YouTube and I just wanted to show you guys because it's definitely been helpful to me. And I'm really glad that we were able to get rid of the circles because this is the first time I've tried doing that and I'm actually really happy that it worked and was successful. So I hope this video helps you out in your KDP journey. I appreciate the support so much. Thank you very, very much for watching and listening this video and I hope that you have a great day.